I volunteer as tribute. In the Hunger Games, 12 districts send two tributes for a free-for-all competition until one is left standing. In college football, we have 11 FBS conferences. Those will be our Hunger Game districts. In the Hunger Games, one boy and one girl are selected from each district. In our Hunger Games, one defense and one offensive representative will be selected. There are so many ways we could spin off this competition, but in this inaugural edition, the best receiver and cornerback from the selected team will be our tributes. To show you how this works, let's find our first tributes from the Pac-2 district. As you know, it's only Washington State and Oregon State left, and Washington State is the team selected. Perfect. On Washington State's panel, we see their top two players already are a cornerback and wide receiver. From this point onward, we have to find our tributes from the other districts, but think of this like an imperialism 1v1 edition battling it out till one remains. Mountain West is being represented by Hawaii. Jumping over to Hawaii's roster, 85 overall, Stephen McBride is representing at receiver, and then their highest corner, 79 overall, Cam Stone. Next, let's head over to the Big 12. Make way for Baylor. Scouting report has me low-key impressed. Caden Jenkins, 84 overall, but look at Monterey Baldwin, the receiver with 98 speed. For the Big Ten, it lands on the Spartans. A few solid options on this team. However, the criteria is clearly receiver and corner. Their best one is Monterey Foster Jr. Out of Conference USA, we have Sam Houston representing. One of the newer teams to Conference USA, it's going to fall on receiver Noah Smith and his shoulders to represent. And of course, David Fisher straight out of Houston. Out of the American, it looks like FAU has the task. Okay, now Owls so far have the best cornerback in Day Day Hill. The SEC guaranteed, I think, to bring some good prospects to the fray. Oklahoma bringing firepower in Deion Burks and Woody Washington. Don't be sleeping on the MAC attack. They are sending their best guys from Kent State. Star sophomore Krishan McCray leading the way. Sun Belt looking for sunny results. Raging Cajuns. Cajuns got a good draw with Keon Martin. The last Power 4 conference, ACC, gonna have to go with Florida State. Absolute units for the Seminoles, Azarea Thomas is the cornerback. Not too shabby either when 85 overall Malik Benson has 96 speed. Can't forget about our independent friends. UMass gets the slight edge. Dead, arguably one of the worst teams in the FBS are throwing their name in the hat with Lake Ellis. 22 players later, each district has found two tributes to represent in the first edition of college football hunger games heck why waste any time let's figure out who is challenging first it looks like florida state is on the attack it's the hunger games seminoles looking to draw first blood directly up north for most of the border are the raging cajuns we got our first one-on-one -on -one matchup malik benson versus keon martin this should be good the first attempt here who's gonna come down with it 1-0 for keon with that first play out of the way i think it's only fitting that i say good luck and may the odds be ever in your favor play number two it's a bang eight versus the corner he comes down with it one one series Malik Benson has one point Keon has a point it's a vertical who's got it Keon locked down. Play number four is a dig in versus Keon. There's Benson with the snag. Series tied up 2-2. Just going to lob one up for the vertical. The final snap, the final play. Keon wins the series 3-2. Switching sides, Cajuns on offense starting off just like Florida State did. Play number one is a vertical. Who's going to win the one-on-one -on -one ball? There's Azarea. Play number two is a bang eight following the same sequence as the other group intercepted by Azarea. Play number three looking for any points for the Cajuns. It's another vertical. It's clamps. Down 3-0 in this series. Louisiana's receiver needs anything here, and at least he gets the dig. Final play, another vertical. It's five points for Florida State, four for Louisiana. This will at least send it to OT. He caught it. 5-5. Five, five. Bonus football, one play on both sides. Here we go with a slant and he's dropped it okay on the other side of the ball if benson for florida state secures it that's game and he holds on salute to our first fallen soldier the Sun Belt district has been eliminated 1v1s always create for intense matchups so let me know your wagers down below in the comment section who's taking it all
But first, you too can win big like Benson by staking on college football players. Thank you to today's sponsor, 1v1Me. 1v1Me is an esports staking platform now letting you stake on top college football players starting July 22nd. Imagine putting stake on the best players and seeing your prediction come true. Why 1v1Me? They're a top 50 app in the App Store. They have a 4.8 rating and have paid out over 35 million to winners. Head down to my 1v1Me link in the description and get started today. You must be 18 or older in the USA, Canada, UK, or Europe. Now let's get back to our matchups. Louisiana goes down first and our next contender is Washington State. No point in spinning the arrow when I know they're going to go take on Hawaii. Washington State on the attack with 83 overall. Kyle Williams going up against Cam Stone. He dropped it in the end zone. Score one for Stone and the Warriors. Play two is the bang eight. Who's coming down with it? Easily defended there. Quickly up 2-0 by Hawaii. Maybe this one will come down. And no. Play four, just trying to get any points on the board. It's a deep dig. It's easy. Williams out of here. Currently 3-1 Hawaii. One last lob to Williams, and he dropped it. So 4-1 Hawaii. Hawaii is gifted at the receiver position. Steven McBride, but there's also a star DB back here. Doesn't matter for McBride. What a haul. You know what that means. Play two is a bang eight, and Washington State's DB has to go flawless. If he gets one more catch, this thing is over. Probably the top toughest play to defend in the set. It's a deep dig. This is rep number four and yep, easy pick in. So Hawaii actually upsets Washington State. This is the site of another man keeping his hunger game stream alive, wanting to be the last one standing. Hit that dance. Okay, number seven. If you haven't picked up on it by now, as you can see, we run the same set of five plays to keep it fair for no matter who's on offense or defense. They know what to expect. Two teams eliminated, nine remain we're headed back to Florida State. Seminoles looking to expand the conquest. Oh boy, this could be the toughest test yet going up against the Sooners. You got to see Burke speed to believe it. I think he's the best threat left on the map. That's crazy. All right, so no matter what I did, Burke's always lined up in the slot. 1v1, still same rules apply. First one is a vertical. The speed kills. Azure Thomas has his hands full on snap number two. We don't have a bang eight, but a post is pretty similar. Let's see what comes out of that. That. Okay, Burks went up and got it. Quickly 2-0 in Burks' favor. Back to the vertical. Will Thomas be able to make a play? There's one. Here we go, lobbing it up. Thomas plays good D. Final snap, I want to reiterate, once I hike the ball and throw it, I do not do anything. My hands are up. It's up to the computer, and it looks like Burks snagged it. You all have met Malik Benson before, receiver from Florida State, but have you all met Woody Washington? He was nowhere on that one. Woody Washington needs to make some plays. Rep number three, Woody's all over it. Deep dig for rep number four. This is an important one, and he is free, no doubt about it. The fate of Florida State comes down to this last play. It's a vertical. Benson's there. Another vertical to Benson. Clamp. Next vertical right after that. Will Benson get this one? That's 0 for 2. Burks looking for the win. Just needs to haul in one, and he does it. That speed just did the rest. The Oklahoma bunch moving on. Running back the wheel it looks like Baylor gets their first shot representing the big 12 district who will they face based on border and direction arrow it looks like Michigan State Baylor Michigan State 1v1 start right now with the first play being a vertical to Baldwin he has 98 speed drops it though with tight coverage also want to come out with a PSA and say I figured out how to get the slot receiver over so I might need to make it up to Florida State somehow since they were forced to face the slot as Baldwin snags that one in. Next, we got the deep dig, and that usually always works out in the receiver's favor. I don't think I've seen it fail yet. That means rep number five is good old Hail Mary. Let's see if the receiver wins, and he does. Baldwin and the Bears won the first set. Now Michigan State on offense. Meet Monterey Foster Jr., but also meet Caden Jenkins, DB. Jenkins, 84 overall, the perfect guy Baylor needed to try to seal this one out. Bang eight. I have to admit, I've never seen that one work either. Rep number three. It's a vertical. Jenkins looking back to play on it. He is 
perfect on defense out there. I know Baylor had the higher overalls in that matchup, but I was impressed how they played. You definitely need a guy like Jenkins to try and clamp Deion Burks. Narrowing down the batch to the final eight, I believe. Sam Houston, Bearcats. I'm mistaken. There are seven teams left, and Sam Houston's going to go up to the left. We just saw Baylor in action. Let's see if they got what it takes twice in a row. Bearcat Nation, you're trusting in a guy named Noah Smith, and Baylor, you got Jenkins out here. For Noah, will it ever work? Not really. Vertical, going up one-on-one. -on -one. Jenkins is so locked down. Has not been playing world-class receivers, but he's done the best job clamping down who he faces. Nice to see Noah Smith get the gimme one right there on the dig and what a catch sam houston trying to shock the world and hang on to hope with a big play right here 79 overall db david fisher is the corner for sam houston the hope and faith of sam houston's relying on that guy but already, as you can see, Monterey Baldwin has 98 speed, and it's not working out well. That bang eight was deflected, albeit Baylor scored. It wasn't Monterey that did the damage. There he is. Winning every deep streak against the guy and the dig to finish it off. Baldwin wins it. Then there were six. Baylor is battle-tested. They get a rest as Kent State takes it on. Spinning the arrow, the flashes need to go to the left. Oh man, I'm just kidding. Baylor does not get a chance to rest. Their border is huge and Kent State's pointing right at them. The clinic McCray just put on makes it really easy for Dallas Branch. He just has to get one stop. And yes, it is tough when you're facing Baldwin, but that bang eight intercepted seals it branch in Kent State for the win. Talk about a wacky and wild matchup. This Imperialism's in for a crazy finish and you don't want to miss the final matchup. The last two teams will face off in the national championship for all of glory. The final five districts remain and UMass is one of them. There goes that arrow and like Katniss Everdeen shooting her arrow. Here come UMass shooting their shot at Kent State. Your newest Hunger Games 1v1 matchup is primetime television. Ladson Jr. versus Dallas branch 1-0 Kent State. Play number two, of course, on theme bang eight. Quickly two in 0 for Kent State. Any step there? Nada. UMass looking for something with the deep dig. It worked out. What a haul. Make it 3-1 in this one. Can he get at least a second point for his team? No. This isn't my fault, but I'm starting to realize in Hunger Games, it also matters who the quarterback is throwing it to you. This dude has noodled of an arm. Really incredible the run Kent State is on. You know Chris Sean McCray versus Lake Ellis. Good defense from UMass. Toughest test yet here with the deep dig and yep not going to stop it. Super hard one to stop and this vertical chance here it is. No clamps. All right, so we're slinging it as many times as it takes on the vertical here until he completes one. It was only one. Essentially, if Ladson doesn't haul it in here on the four verts, this first play, it's going to double overtime and it's in out the hands. Congrats to Kent State making the final four. Chris Sean wasn't as dominant as he was when he faced Baylor, but hey, a job done is a job done. Final four, here we come. It looks like Oklahoma back on the clock. This team on paper is probably a favorite. We saw Baylor get exposed. I don't know if Oklahoma is going to allow that to happen. Oklahoma bordering a ton of Kent State land, but that arrow is pointed down into the left. So I think F use on the clock. This is probably the most anticipated matchup left on paper. It's Burks versus Day Day Hill. Don't be sleeping on Day Day Hill. I know Burks is a stud, but check out that defense. Burks now forced to go on the outside. He was in the slot last and look at the job being put in. 3-1, final shot for Oklahoma on offense. Will this vertical connect? Oh my goodness, good one-handed deflection. Day-Day is a star, but so is Woody Washington, and he's got to clamp down a 75 overall receiver, Marlon Johnson. Another vertical, what's it gonna be? Anything, no. For sure, gotta get the deep dig. That is an essential, and he's got it. Now just needs to complete a vertical to win. 5-4 FAU for the win, essentially, if he can somehow get up and make a play. OT rules. We're going to go as long as it takes until the FAU guy brings one in. Attempt number three, nine, please make a play. Attempt number 11. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to sleep on day day, but I'm just saying when you get 11 tries, yeah, he got it in one. Would have been cool to see FAU. Unfortunately, receiving core, not a strong suit over there. Final three, it comes down to Kent State. Flash attack. The arrow is deciding to the right and down.
That only means one thing, Kent State versus Oklahoma, and congratulations to Hawaii. They're in the national championship Hunger Game finale. Which version of Krishan will we get? The one that exposed Jenkins and Baylor, or one that gets clamped up by Woody? Final rep, good luck, Krishan. Can you get your team at least one point? All Burks has got to do is catch one ball over Dallas. So far, 1-0 on the defensive side of things. Make it 2-0, Kent State branch showing up. I felt like there was a lot more action in the earlier slate of DB receiver matchups, but there it is. Burks ices it out. Against all odds, Dallas did step up in this one and play solid defense, which is frankly encouraging to see if you're Hawaii, because now in the national championship game, you take on the Sooners, but you just saw Dallas Branch, a 70 overall corner, clamp down Burks. It started with 11 districts to remain the Mountain West District and the SEC district one can only claim ultimate glory and be the last one standing it is at the biggest stage the final frontier whatever you want to call it it's Hawaii Warriors Oklahoma Sooners next here we go Stephen McBride Woody Washington national championship game three cracks at a Hail Mary whoever wins the best of three in McBride hits the first one worried for my guy Cam Stone back there on Hawaii let's see if he has the stones to play deep defense and Burks just cooked him one play touchdown attempt number two for McBride will he get past Woody Washington that's good defense never easy to get past Woody that's what we've realized maybe this third attempt is the one McBride hauls it in Oklahoma still has two more chances so we're gonna flip the field and give them the ball here we go, Burks, Cam Stone, 1v1. Who's ready? Who wants to make a play? Anyone want to win? It's impossible to stop Burks, is it? Cam Stone, I wish you luck. It hasn't worked this far, and it won't work. Three for three. Burks just did it all today. Oklahoma, congratulations. You are the Hunger Games last one standing. McBride with a valiant effort. This was the play that sealed it. It is just too speedy out there on the edge. The Oklahoma Sooners do it all. Woody Washington and Deion Burks were the only ones to walk out of the Hunger Game arena alive at the end, so kudos to them. Let me know if you enjoyed the idea of Hunger Games and college football. I feel like there were a lot of ways we can fine tune it and find additional variants to play around with, but I'm curious your take on it. Let me know down below in the comment section. And as always, if you're soaking it up with King Sponge, hit the subscribe button.